everyone welcome to this update video i hope you're doing really great this morning now in this update we'll be taking a look a little recap at yesterday's eclipse as seen from jamaica i'll be showing you guys what i captured but i also want to talk about the weather conditions for today of course uh, some areas in the northeastern caribbean will be receiving some additional showers but also there could be a substantial increase as we head into next week models are showing that there is some sort of a consensus and uh, that would be great news to definitely help out those areas which have been experienced in very dry conditions and droughts so let's get straight into it as it relates to yesterday's eclipse first i want to show you the satellite imagery uh, the visible satellite imagery i think it's really cool to actually see the moon's shadow crossing earth so a total solar eclipse was seen in mexico parts of the u.s and atlantic canada meanwhile surrounding areas including parts of the caribbean saw a partial solar eclipse and it wasn't very impressive for some areas and i highlighted in previous videos that i made about it that hey without the proper viewing equipment without a solar filter you're not gonna know an eclipse is happening for jamaica why because it's gonna be a partial eclipse and only about 20 percent of the sun is going to be blocked out at maximum now this is what i captured with my diy filter which is layer tint i shared that method in previous videos as well so uh, that is near the maximum solar eclipse and this is without uh the filter but then as the clouds moved by and uh, the sun fully came back out in its glory i had to put it back on because without it you wouldn't know that an eclipse is happening and uh, this is my camera with the brightness significantly reduced to the lowest level uh, to try to see the sun through the clouds and then with the filter this is what i captured this was the maximum solar eclipse so just as expected it came to fruition it was a really wonderful time viewing unfortunately not everyone sees it that way because apparently it was expected that the day would go dark when i already said it multiple times that that was not going to be the case for jamaica you're not going to know an eclipse is happening if you do not have that solar filter but i guess because of that because of the disappointment so many people were upset about it but hey i can do but so much and i'm here to not spread any misinformation that's why i give everything down to the detail and that is why it is important that we pay attention and actually listen to the information presented before us all right so let's get into weather conditions across the basin now we can see that front which extends into the caribbean the tail of it is that source of rainfall for the northeast and elsewhere the caribbean is kind of dry right now there's still some saharan dust lingering around some areas the eastern pacific looks pretty active though we see lots of thunderstorms so those white dots indicate lightning strikes to the u.s some severe weather across some of these states unfortunately uh, because of that developing system it blocked out the view of the eclipse in some uh, areas in the path of totality and the next total solar eclipse that will sweep across north america will be i believe 2045 heading out into the atlantic there is some convection out there along the intertropical convergence zone but nothing too crazy zooming into the caribbean we can see all this cloud cover across some areas again some showers moving by the northeast and uh winds have also been kicking up it's been so windy and i showed that in the forecast yesterday uh just how much the winds would be kicking up so uh, we'll be looking at that momentarily but going on to the rainfall forecast so uh the more color we see indicate higher rainfall amounts so for the northeast caribbean areas such as anguilla saint martin saint Barthelme, seba saint eustatius uh, saint kitts and nevis montserrat antigua barbuda the virgin islands puerto rico some spots in hispaniola there could be some additional downpours as we head through today even some passing showers does have to be anything too crazy However, things get a lot drier, Guadalupe southward through Grenada, and a few showers may move by parts of Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, not at all guaranteed for everyone because some areas will be dry today. ABC Island's likely to be pretty dry, not seeing uh, any significant rainfall expected, not even those gray shadings around, so it's likely to be another dry, sunny, and windy day. As we head towards northern South America, Venezuela, Guyana, parts of Suriname, much not expected, French Guiana may experience a bit more rain and parts of Colombia. And as we saw in the Eastern Pacific, it's pretty active there. So near Costa Rica, Panama, and even parts of Southern Nicaragua, there could be some substantial rainfall, maybe up to an inch or so at maximum today. San Andres, Providencia, most of Honduras, 
uh, El Salvador, the Bay Islands, and uh, parts of Guatemala, Mexico, the Keys offshore Belize, Belize itself. Much is not expected today. Same thing, the Cayman Islands, most of Cuba, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, and much of the Florida Peninsula. As for Jamaica, there may be some shower activity today. Euro is a uh, favor in the eastern side. We see those yellow shadings popping up. So we'll see. There could be some passing showers across the island today, especially as we head into the afternoon. So it would be good that if you're going out, you carry your umbrella just in case. Although a substantial downpour is not guaranteed. Looking at the wind forecast, here we can see lots of purples, lots of blues popping up. Now, some of these wind gusts could be up to tropical storm force in parts of the Caribbean, especially just offshore Colombia. So some of those wind gusts could be up to 40 or over 40 miles per hour in some areas. And across most of the region, uh, those sustained winds up to 20, uh, 25 miles per hour, the Bay Islands of Honduras, just offshore Central America, the vicinity of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, Hispaniola, and even up to the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, although it may not be as windy because we're not seeing a lot of those blue shadings. However, as we head into later this evening, uh, the Northeastern Islands, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and even uh, the Leeward Islands will get pretty windy as that front continues to make its way out. ABC Islands will be windy right throughout today. Things will be a little bit calmer for uh, the rest of the Lesser Antilles. However, some of those winds may kick up at times. So what's causing the strong winds in the region? Well, that is as a result of an area of high pressure behind that front. So an area of high pressure lies north of the Caribbean, but it is interacting with an area of low pressure located over Colombia. So because of that, the uh, steep pressure gradient of uh, the difference between these two we have these stronger winds pulsing across the region. So that is something that's pretty much common. That's why after the passage of cold fronts, especially in winter, we uh, experience some stronger winds at times. So that's what's happening, guys. And in terms of the wave heights, because it is very windy out there, wave heights aren't going to be too crazy for parts of the Caribbean, such as the Lesser Antilles near Puerto Rico, uh, surrounding most of Hispaniola, the Bahamas, Cuba, Cayman Islands. However, for Jamaica, some of those wave heights could be up to six, seven feet. Uh, just north of Jamaica, so for the northern part of the island, you may notice a bit more wave action out there. And also south of Jamaica in uh, the south central caribbean we can see uh, some of those yellow shadings even starting to pop up so that sees up to around uh 10 feet or so and also in the gulf as we're seeing but offshore is where we have the most activity out there so even for uh, bermuda it's a little bit active today in terms of those uh seas but that is not something uncommon because i mean a lot of these systems they exit the u.s and uh result in that swell event across the atlantic so that's what's happening, guys. And now we want to go ahead and uh, shift to the models and what is expected. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, they are showing somewhat of a rainfall increase for parts of the northeastern Caribbean as we're going to be heading into next week. Let's kickstart with Euro. So as we head into next Wednesday, the 17th of April, we can see all of these green shadings around. And these green, uh, green shadings indicate the moisture, the precipitation rate. We can see that cluster of activity expected within the vicinity of the Northern Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. As we head to the ICON model, this is for Tuesday, the 16th of April. We're still seeing that increase, similar thing to what the Euro model is expecting. The Canadian model is also showing that rainfall increase. We're seeing all of these green shadings and even some yellows, oranges, reds popping up. And finally, the GFS model. So we are seeing that there is uh, some consensus about that. And it would be absolutely great if it comes to fruition because many places have been dry. Some areas have not received any substantial rain in weeks or even months. So it would be good if there is uh, this rainfall relief actually happening. Hopefully no flooding because we know how it goes sometimes with these low pressure systems. They can result in a lot of heavy rain in a very short amount of time overwhelming some of these areas. So we don't want any flooding. However, that rainfall increase is most definitely needed. As it relates to the rainfall total, now this is from now through Thursday evening of next week. We can see these purple shadings popping up, indicating rainfall amounts up to three, three and a half inches, even four inches or higher across some areas just offshore the islands. So with that uh, system expected, we are seeing that Euro is definitely showing 
that substantial increase in rainfall over the next couple of days uh, near the northeastern Caribbean. Of course, areas in South America remain pretty active, uh, will be pretty active. Not something strange to see this time of year. But that is what I wanted to share with you guys. That is what is going on right now. That's what is expected across the basin. And so I really hope that you found this video to be very informative. But if you have any questions, feel welcome to post them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.